Right, here's where we start. I'll tell you first what it is, and then I'll go into the reasons why uh, we do it, we're doing it and how it relates to other initiatives. Okay, It's regrettably at this stage not very much higher level than, than ARIA, uh, and it needs to be. Okay. Right, what it is essentially is uh, the job for mobiles that uh, um, people tried to do for desktops and didn't really quite quite succeed. Uh, mobile devices are coming on stream very fast. The Internet of Things is coming on stream very on stream very fast. We need to be able to talk about these things uh, in a way that really works across uh, across platforms, uh, because we are defeated by the complexity of technologies and the complexity of media and and the complexity of people that's out there. So what we're trying to do in W three C. Um, is uh, built around a model that does that. Okay, uh, essentially, it's based around events that bubble up from the from the interface, and it's a little bit like a, an a, well, it is like an API that you can use uh, if you're technical from the from the DOM, uh, and the user context, which represents user preferences that you can use in that uh, in that context. So it's settings, really. But it's more than settings because it's interoperable settings. It's settings across the world. It's settings across across context. That's a very difficult thing to achieve. At the moment, both of these things are in editor's draft, uh, which means that they're not ready anywhere near to be published yet, but they are in progress. OK, so roughly speaking, you can go read this on the, uh, on the website. Uh, this tells you the kind of stuff that you've got at the moment in events. It's very low level. It's about things like drag and drop, uh, things like colors and clicks, touches, which are like mouse clicks uh, and so on and that kind of stuff. Go and read it on the website if you want. I'll miss out that. Uh, and the user context, which is about the preferences that you would want in different contexts on different devices. Uh, and at the moment, it's, it's, it is fairly low level. That's why I've written fairly low level preferences. So at the moment, it's stuff like uh, colors and font settings, uh, some stuff that you would do with CSS, with media settings, with media queries, um, things like, I don't really don't like this screen reader settings. We had a big debate and argument about whether we should put stuff like screen reader settings in, in there uh, because it really needs a more abstract model than that. If you if you have screen read, if you tell the web application you're using that you, you that you've got a screen reader, well, they know something about you, don't they? Okay. Um, so uh, some of us think we need to go a bit faster and, and build in a much higher level um, abstract way of dealing with these things. It is planned, but it's not quite there yet. It's planned in these two things here, uh, which I'm not particularly going to talk about. Um, we're, we're, you can go look at these things. You can edit these things. You can make input to these things. These are public wikis, uh, and hopefully, we're going to. We're, we're, the aim is we'll talk about abstract media properties like uh, whether whether something's visual, auditory, uh, whatever, and user requirements in in uh, in those terms as well. There's a lot of technical issues to be solved to do that. Now, why? Or why do I believe that we need to do this? I might think my screen, I don't know how to set this thing so it doesn't switch off. Right. Um, accessibility is, that should be a setting, shouldn't it, <laughs> in, my, in my preferences. Uh, it's a, in my view, it's a relationship between producer and consumer. It's more complex than that, but that's what it comes down to. I've produced something, you want to consume it. Uh, does that actually work for you? It's a gap, and I, I think, Every one of the mechanisms that we've used to deal with accessibility is some way of managing that relationship. It's some way of handling that relationship. And I think if you think about it as a relationship, you can see particularly why some methods work more, work better than, uh, than other models. So if we look at a few of the models that, that actually lead us to particular, particular methods, uh, the medical model is extremely common. common. Uh, arthrit I've got arthritic wrists, therefore I can't turn door handles. What's wrong with this? In my personal view, it's negative. It says, you aren't normal, you've got this characteristic. Well, none of I don't know what normal is. I mean, you know, none of us are, none of us are normal. I'd like to see these things expressed in a more positive way. Uh, and it's also a model, okay? If you're a scientist, 
you know it's a model, you know that, okay, it doesn't describe you, it's just the best disease model that we've got at the moment, we're going to improve it later on. Uh, but unfortunately, people out there who have to who implement the stuff don't know that, they don't realise that, they don't think about that, uh, and it's abused. Uh, any accessibility developers in the room will be familiar with clients coming to you and saying, just give me the cheapest possible solution you want. I, don't, I can have, I don't care about it. It's a model, so what? You know, if it satisfies what I've got to satisfy, that's it. That happens to me a lot. Uh, right, social model. I love this model. That's, you're disabled by the way we all do things in society, which don't happen to take account you. I love it, but... How do we actually implement it? It doesn't tell, an awful, tell us an awful lot about how to go um, about doing it. So it falls down there. In the UK, we have this thing called biopsychosocial model. I won't go into its, into its um, history, uh, but it's been used to limit people's benefits and to um, prevent them from doing the things that they actually prevent them from getting the resources that they need to be mobile. Uh, and I just want to say that I think it's rubbish. Um, and that's a stab to the UK government. Technological approaches. Um, well, we all know about these. Uh, WCAG is, 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 is the obvious technological approach to this, and user testing is to some degree a technological approach. I think it's good, but what's wrong with it, again, is that you're very, very often, and WCAG most certainly, you're pro focused entirely on the producer side. It's how can I make this work for all those users, okay? Now, if you've ever been, if you've ever tried to manage a relationship that way, you probably got divorced pretty soon. Uh, this doesn't work, okay? Right, of more value, I think, and is where we need to go, are models that involve user needs, but we need to get them built into, into architectures, okay? And so instead of in the medical model saying you've got arthritic wrists, you might say uh, this user needs a handle that can be turned with a low force. Now, if we had our needs expressed in sets of preferences like this, designs would be able to op be optimized to those needs. Now, user needs are models also, okay? They're not necessarily reality, but they might be a little bit closer to reality and a little bit more. We can, we can talk about whether it's satisfied particular needs or not than we can with some of the others. The biggest problem, as I see it, is someone projecting onto someone else, this is what you need. And it isn't right, okay? Because it isn't, what, you know, what somebody... It's not, it's not reality. And that's what most of the models uh, actually do. I think it's very difficult because we all of us, I think, tend to perceive the world that way. We categorize the world. We think about how it works. We limit the input we can get into our, into it, we can deal with by looking at it that way. But it, it doesn't really deal with relationships properly. And in order to deal with relationships, you need to have uh, influence from both sides of this. That's both producer and consumer, okay? Now, we can actually do that with technology, or we will be able to do that soon with technology. Another angle on this, it's not just one producer, it's many producers, it's many, many uh, technologies, it's the marketplace. No wonder it's difficult. How can we get some coherence and, and some interoperability into this space? Uh, and if we don't, it gets, gets, gets forgotten and it, be, it be just becomes too complex. Right, desktops. What happened with desktops? They were all different. They didn't do accessibility. There weren't any accessibility APIs. And then we got some accessibility APIs. These are actually standardized. Uh, although they existed a long time before the standards were there, you can develop to them and it works. So you know what the Windows accessibility API is if you're a developer and you can, you can work to it. You still got the problem of many platforms and, and, and you know, they, don't, they don't interoperate, but at least there's, there's something there um, that, that, you, that you can work with, okay? Um, in mobile space, we don't have that. It doesn't exist. Or not only all the platforms are different, but what are the accessibility APIs that you as a developer can use is, is far less clear. 
we're also in a situation where things are changing very rapidly with the Internet of Things coming on stream. They're going to continue to change very rapidly. The devices we're dealing with, the context we, we're dealing with. How can we, th these technologies are going to evolve. How can we get some cohesion into that space? And we believe we can do it with having a common API. Just think if you'd had a common API for desktops, how much easier that would have been, how much cheaper that would have made the development of accessible technology. Okay. Uh, with a common API, which is what this events model is, uh, and individual preferences built in to those. And these two together are what the, Indi the W3C Indie UI uh, initiative um, is about. And what we ultimately need is we need our content and our user interface to adapt to preferences in context. So yeah, you're at the bank, you're trying to use the ATM and the sun comes out, uh, and you need the brightness to change so that you can, or the contrast to change so that so that you can you can read the thing and so on. It needs to be it needs to adapt to to situations in context. That is perfectly possible if we put the right technological architectural pieces uh, in play in place. What's hard about it? Getting organisations to do this in harmony and to keep in step because there are a few organisations that are on board with this. What preferences do we want? And we've got awkward technical problems and, and diverse business strategies that actually get in the way of interoperating across platform, like walled gardens uh, and arguments between one major vendor and another major vendor. Security and privacy are hellish problems to deal with. Uh, I don't think we've dealt with them yet. Right, some organizational pieces. Uh, follow the URLs in your own time. What we need, if we're going to do the content world, we need content and user interface on stuff that's out there on the web to adapt to these preferences that we've, that we've got. So we need to know what sort of metadata, what sort of stuff is, is, is out there. One effort here that I'll show you on the next slide, some of. And we need preferences uh, to match these. Here's a couple of organizations working on, on preferences. Uh, follow the links and have a look at the stuff because I'm going to run out of time to talk about it. Right, uh, example, metadata. This is accepted by schema.org and W3C. Uh, it's out there, there's a link to it, some, that's the link on the previous page. This, I think, is fairly low level metadata. This is stuff you put on content. See this stuff on the, on the right, accessible, accessibility feature, and this is only some of it, okay? And again, I think this, if you have this, if you select content that matches some of this, I think it tells people things about you physically that, that you probably don't want to tell them uh, without them asking your permission uh, or whatever. So it needs the higher level model as well. There is a higher level model. Um, the reason I'm showing you this is because this is there now in a metadata schema and it's 1.0. The higher level model is in 1.1, which isn't public yet. We dropped it at a political with a small p hurdle at the last minute. Related initiatives. Whew. GPII, I know two minutes. GPII, uh, Global Public Inclusive Infrastructure, is implementing uh, preferences, metadata, and matching engines across devices and platforms that works with all, the, all this stuff. Uh, there's in, initiatives going on in EPUB 3, which is based around HTML. What a chance to actually do the job properly. They're adopting that web schema's metadata that I just showed you on the, on the last slide. And they will be adopting 1.1 as well. It needs the preferences to go with it. That's what I'm working on. Action, IEEE, Actional Data Book, is a project that's implementing prototypes of adaptation of preferences for eBooks around this other, other work. Okay, so that's very, very important. I mean, you know what's coming with e you, you need your ebooks to do all, you need, they're gonna have all sorts of stuff in. I mean, they're gonna have videos in, and audio in, and animations in, and little games in, and assessments in. They need to adapt to individual preferences, okay? Which is why we're doing that. Uh, okay, I don't know if I've even got time to read it. Um, things gone off. We want to be able to use the same content across multiple devices, and it needs to be adapted to individual preferences and needs, including accessibility-related needs. I actually don't think there's any difference between accessibility-related needs and other needs if you stop putting people in groups. 
Okay, you can just read that. I don't need to read it out. And it's on the slides for afterwards. And that's me. Phew, I did it. To the minute, to the second. <laughs> okay. I've never done a presentation that fast before. I hope that was useful. Yes, we have been pressing you very much. But, okay. <laughs> Thank you.